This question popped up on a video about how to import multiple Excel files in Power BI Desktop. The technique covered in this video relies on all the Excel files to have the same structure, and the end result is that all the files get merged into one single giant table in the final data model. And that's not quite what this user wanted. This person wants to be able to import multiple Excel files, up to 20 of them in fact, but each Excel file is different, so the end result should be one separate table in the data model for each Excel file imported. Now I don't know of a sensible easy way to do this in Power BI Desktop itself. If you do know of a convenient way to do this, I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. As far as I know, to do this we'd have to open up the Excel import wizard in Power BI, and then one by one go through each of these Excel files to import them through the wizard one at a time. I do know however that if you have a single Excel workbook with multiple worksheets in it, you can import the multiple worksheets of a single file in one go. So my thought is that we could combine all these workbooks into one single consolidated file and import that in one step, and that's what we'll go through in this video. I'm starting with a blank workbook, which I have saved as a macro-enabled workbook, and I've placed that in a folder along with a subfolder called My Files, and inside there are all the workbooks whose worksheets we're going to copy. The files themselves aren't particularly interesting. Each one of these workbooks has a single worksheet with a table on the first sheet, and we're just going to copy each one of those into a new workbook. To begin with our VBA code, I'm going to head to the Developer tab and then head into the Visual Basic Editor and then I'm going to insert a new module into the project. And before I start writing any code, I'm going to set a reference to an object library, which allows me to quickly and easily loop over files in a folder. So I'm going to go to the Tools menu and choose References. And then in this list, I'm going to look for a library called the Microsoft Scripting Runtime. So that's the one. And if I just check the box next to that, that gives us quick, easy ways to manipulate files and folders. So I can click OK and then I can write a subroutine which I'm going to call, uh, let's call it uh, copy worksheets or something along those lines. The first thing I'm going to do in here is declare a variable which can hold a reference to something called a file system object. So I'm going to say dim fso as scripting, which is the name of the library I've just referenced, dot file system object. And then two more objects from that library, I'm going to declare something called fol as a scripting.folder, and that's going to be a reference to the folder holding all of our files. And then another variable I'm going to call f as a scripting.file, and of course that's going to hold the individual file that we're going to look at as we loop through the folders. I need to create a new instance of my file system object class, so I'm going to say set fso equals new scripting.file system object. And then I want to set a reference to the folder containing all the files I want to loop over. So I'm going to say set fol equals, and then I can use my file system object to get a reference to a folder using the get folder method. Now inside the get folder method, I have to pass in the path of the folder I want to capture. So if I wanted to put in the complete file path, I could say something like c colon backslash, etc, etc, etc. But there's a quicker and easier way to do this. If my folder is in a subdirectory of the workbook that I'm currently working in, I can say this workbook.path to get the path to the current workbook, and then concatenate to the end of that the rest of the folder path. So I can say backslash my files. It's not case sensitive, but I can't leave the capital I there. So there we go, my files. Now that I've done that, we can write the basic loop to loop through the files collection of that folder. So I'm going to say for each f in fol.files, give myself a couple of blank lines and say next f, and then inside the loop, just to demonstrate that we are indeed looping through the correct collection, I'm going to use a basic debug.print statement, and I'm going to print out the path to the file that we're currently looking at. Debug.print statements aren't particularly useful unless you can see the immediate window. So I'm going to head to the view menu and choose immediate window. And then having done that, I'm going to run the subroutine just to prove that we are indeed looping through all of those files stored in that folder. Next, I'd like to open up each workbook in Excel and then loop through the collection of worksheets in each workbook before then closing the workbook down. Now I know that currently we only have one worksheet in each workbook, but we can't guarantee that in the future that will still be the case. So let's make our code a bit more future-proof by looping through the entire collection of worksheets. 
To do that, I'm going to declare another couple of variables at the top of my subroutine. I'm going to say dimwb as workbook and dimws as worksheet. Then inside the for each loop, just after the debug.print statement, I'm going to say set wb equals, and then I'm going to refer to the workbooks collection and apply the open method to it. Now the open method requires me to pass in the path of a file that I want to open up. Unfortunately, as we've seen, we've got access to that in the path property of the file object. So I can say f.path, and then that will open up the workbook whose path I've just retrieved. A little later on, then I'm going to want to close down that workbook. I, shan't, I don't want to leave all of my workbooks open. So let's just add in a bit of code that will say wb.close at the end. In between opening and closing the workbook, then I'd like to loop through the collection of worksheets in the workbook. So let's say for each ws in wb.worksheets, so the specific collection of worksheets in the workbook I've just opened. I'm just going to move my or close my immediate window just to give myself a bit more room a couple of blank lines and then say next ws. And then inside here, all I'm going to do is just another quick check. I'm going to say debug.print and then I'm going to print out the name of the worksheet. So ws.name. So I'm going to bring back the immediate window by pressing Control and G. I'll press Control and A to highlight all the existing text and then delete it all. And then I'm going to click back into my subroutine and run the whole thing again. And we should see each file gets opened and closed one after the other. And then we end up with a list of not just the file names, but the list of all the worksheets belonging to those files. The next step is to copy each worksheet into a workbook, which will combine them. So in fact, let's start by adding the combined workbook. I'm going to declare a new variable at the top. I'll call this one uh, combined file as a workbook. And then I'm going to create a new instance of the workbook by saying set combined file equals workbooks.add. Now inside the loop, and in fact, let me just close the immediate window again to give myself a bit more room. Inside the inner loop, which is looping through the worksheets, I don't just want to print out the worksheet's name. I would like to say ws.copy. And then I can specify where I would like to place the new worksheet. Now I can place this either before or after an existing worksheet by referencing it with either the before or the after parameter. It doesn't really matter where I place this. I'm going to place my new worksheet after the first worksheet in the combined file workbook. So when we add a new workbook, it gets created with a single worksheet in it by default. So I'm going to place my new worksheet or my copied worksheet after combined file dot worksheets number one. So that will just build up our sequence of copy worksheets in the new workbook. I'm just going to comment out my debug.print statements at this point. I'm done with those for the time being. And then I'm just going to run this subroutine just so we can see the end result. So we should see that our new workbook has been created with a generic name, book one, all the other workbooks being opened and closed. And then if I look back at Excel into this new combined workbook, we can see each of the worksheets has been copied in one after the other. Next, I'd just like to do a bit of tidying up with the output workbook that we create. So I've closed down book one. And what I'd like to do is make sure that the first worksheet, the initial blank one that we get when we add the workbook, gets deleted right at the end. So let's head down to after the next F statement. And we're going to say, um, first of all, I'm going to switch off the alert messages. So I'm going to say application.displayAlerts equals false. That's just to ensure that when we say combined file dot worksheets one dot delete, we don't get prompted to ask us if we're sure we want to delete that worksheet. And then once we've finished deleting the worksheet, we can reset the alerts back to true. So that will tidy up that worksheet, first of all. Next, I'd like to save that workbook in a sensible location, probably, I guess, in the same path as the current workbook or the one that's got this code stored in it. So we can say combined file dot save as, and then I'm going to say this workbook dot path. And then I want to concatenate to the end of that a backslash. And then what should we call this one? All worksheets or combined files or something similar to that. Anything that sounds sensible at this point. 
Having done that, we could leave the file open if we wanted to. Alternatively, we could close it down. So we can do that by saying combined file.close. So I am now going to run the subroutine again and we'll see it loop through the files. I should have deleted a few of the files just to demonstrate the principle, the fact that it's actually working. But once it's finished, if I look now in my copy worksheet from multiple workbooks, I've got my all worksheets file just sitting there. There are a couple of other things you might consider adding to your code. First of all, if we ran the subroutine again, it would just overwrite our existing copy of all worksheets. So you might consider adding some kind of unique date timestamp to make the file name unique, running less risk of it being overwritten. To do that, we could fairly easily concatenate the formatted version of the date and time to the end of the file name. If I just bring back my immediate window by pressing Ctrl and G, then I'm just going to clear the contents by pressing Ctrl A and then delete. If I typed in a question mark and then looked for the result of the now function, it shows you the date and time down to the last second. But the return value includes forward slash characters and colon characters, neither of which are valid for a file name. So what we could do instead is format the result of the now function to strip away all those illegal characters. So I just display the date as year, so four Ys, two Ms and two Ds, as years, months and days, and then perhaps a space, a couple of Hs, a couple of Ms and a couple of Ss for hours, minutes and seconds. And then if I hit enter, you'll see that we basically get the same date, but formatted completely differently, but it's enough to generate a unique code number. So I could just take that bit of code rather than write it out again, close the immediate window, and then just concatenate that to the end of the file name, meaning that the each file would be unique each time we run the subroutine. Next, it's worth checking that the files we're looping over and trying to open up are indeed Excel files. The workbooks open method certainly expects one. So if, for example, we put, I don't know, a PowerPoint document or a Word document in there, then we'd run into a problem when we try to open it up as an Excel workbook. One way to do this is to check the file name extension and the file system object class has got a specific method used to strip off the extension of a file name. So what we could do just inside the for each loop, which is looping through the files before we attempt to open up the workbook, we could say if fso.getExtension name and then we have to pass in a path to a file whose extension we want to extract. So that's going to be f.path. And then we can check if it's equal to a specific string. So in this case, it will be XLSX then. And then I'm just going to indent all of these subsequent lines by highlighting them all and then hitting the tab key to indent them. And then we just need to make sure that we write in the end if statement to close off that conditional section. All right, so I think we're there at that point. If we run the subroutine one more time, once again, we'll go through all the files, combining them all into a new workbook. The end result this time, if I look at the My Files folder and then just go back up to the higher level, we've got a uniquely named workbook this time, all worksheets with a date and timestamp. And that means that I can now go into Power BI and I can click the Import from Excel button, head to the folder containing th those files. Doesn't matter which one I go for, let's go for the most recent one. And fortunately in here, I've got multiple worksheets with different structures, but that's okay. I can click on the center sheet, hold down the shift key and click on the town sheet, and then just hit the load button to have all of those worksheets imported in one go. Might take a little while, but it's better than importing them one after the other. And the nice thing is that that bit of code that now that it's written will work regardless of which Excel workbooks you put into your My Files folder. So you can reuse it again and again just replacing the files in the My Files folder. Nearly there. So there's all of our tables loaded in and you can see those in the data view as well. And also in the model view with their relationships created too. So hopefully that's answered the original question. I appreciate it requires a little bit of extra knowledge about VBA, but it's a useful skill to learn for situations like this. As I said before, if anybody has a, a better way to do that using native Power BI or Power Query techniques, do feel free to let us know in the comments. I'd, I'd love to hear about them. Um, otherwise, hope you found that one useful. Thanks for watching. See you next time.